That's a hard slam from Pompeo, right? He took away Assange's state. I mean, is he solid? Is he gaseous? Is he liquid? We don't know. We don't know anymore. <laughs> Pompeo took all of those qualities away from him because he and the CIA got caught spying on the citizens of America and Assange himself. But there is a silver lining because Assange doesn't need a state because he's transcended that, right? The truth has no state. It just is. We'll be putting that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Uh, you might notice some laughter in this episode, some laughter coming in in the backdrop, some people talking uh, from, from, from the shadows, so it might seem. Uh, but that's because this was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. That's right. It was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. I do um, weekly Zoom, almost weekly Zoom shows uh, called The Citizen revolution and then they become episodes of fork full of noodles that you're watching right now so if you want to be a part of the live virtual audience you can totally do that you totally have the opportunity to do that uh it's super fun we get to have a Q&A and a discussion at the very end of it, uh, and uh, I get to meet you guys and hang out with you guys and talk to you guys. So if you want to be a part of that experience, you can grab your tickets right now. And uh, as a special treat, if you become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It happened almost every single Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you grab those tickets. You can go to my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, and lastly, I want to say that uh, we uh, were able to raise some money to help the folks at uh, Action for Assange. Uh, to get down to D.C. to cover this trial. So if you want to continue helping them out, check them out at Action for Assange. Uh, make sure you donate to them. Make sure you help them uh, give you guys the, the accurate news when it comes to Julian Assange. So uh, without any further ado, let's dive into this. Of course, the most prominent of all these cases uh, that show the true brutality of the Espionage Act is the trial of Julian Assange. The Australian publisher is currently facing 175 years in prison if he's extradited to the United States for revealing how American soldiers are committing war crimes in the Middle East, right? The CIA is using smart devices to, to spy on its citizens. Credit card companies are defrauding their customers and how insane Scientology really is. And that's just scratching the surface of what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have revealed to the world. I mean, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have revealed so many different kinds of war crimes and corporate fraud that Skittles is coming out with, this, with a new bag of flavors to capitalize on these tragedies. <laughs> yeah, very exciting, guys. Skittles, <laughs> taste the war crime. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Is that the sour ones? Those are <laughs> those are all of the that's it's just the sour parts in a bag. That's all it is. <laughs> mm, doesn't get better. <laughs> uh, we talked a little, a little about this at the top of uh, of our discussion, but currently Julian Assange is in Belmarsh Prison, which, as Steve mentioned, is the U is the UK's Guantanamo Bay. Right, UK basically decided, hey, why let America have all the fun, huh? <laughs> we can torture people willy-nilly too, you know? After all, they are the OG imperialists. And look, there isn't any argument that he's not being tortured, right? He is indefinitely being tortured. UN, Rep UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Niels Melger, has confirmed that Assange is a victim of torture. And to recap why he's in Belmarsh, Assange was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy where he had lived in the asylum for 
seven years when the conservative president of Ecuador revoked his asylum and sent the UK police in. He was sent to prison for supposedly skipping bail for a trial in Sweden for a crime he did not commit. Like when, even when Sweden found out about that, they were like, wait, what, what's happening right now? What are we doing? He was supposed to be in Belmarsh for 50 weeks. That was determined in April of 2019. He's now well past that 50 week mark and is still in prison. Because of his deteriorating health conditions, he's at high risk of getting COVID-19, especially in a prison where the guards and the prisoners are not wearing masks, right? I think by proxy, that makes the Espionage Act anti-mask. <laughs> we should all be mad. <laughs> now, earlier this year, the extradition trial began where he was subject to disorienting conditions from being moved from room to room, strip search, and kept in a clear box away from his attorneys during the trial. Guys, I have seen serial killers that have said they're willing to eat the judge's faces, receive better treatment than this. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> right? For fuck's sake, guys, we are letting a war criminal finger paint and fucking sell them on Etsy while a publisher is in abhorrent conditions. <laughs> this is the society we live in. While the UK courts and the American government are trying to win the world's greatest authoritarian mug, the corporate, me yeah, the corporate media has been spreading lies and smears about Julian Assange. Last year after his arrest, CNN ran an expose where they revealed the true horrors of someone like Julian Assange. One of the, one of the first things they claimed in the article was that uh, Assange smeared feces all over the walls and then, he, and then he punched the guards in the face. And then when people were like, where's the proof, CNN? Where's the proof of all this? They threw a smoke bomb and disappeared into the Fox News building. <laughs> <laughs> CNN is smearing shit on the name of journalistic integrity. They are the national inquirer of corporate news. That's what they are. Now, the reason... CNN is running these type of smears on Assange is because he revealed the collusion between the DNC and the Clinton campaign in 2016. And because we have a three-way love affair between paranoia, spy movies, and no accountability, <laughs> CNN and MSNBC went down the McCarthyist rabbit hole yet again. And they began by saying that Assange was turning the Ecuadorian embassy into an election meddling headquarters, you know? Like, like Assange was part of the exiled legion of doom, using their superpowers of the press to bring the good guys of the American government to, you know, they can continue drone bombing innocent weddings. You know, like the good guys do. <laughs> You guys remember that comic book where Superman goes into a wedding and, and they were just like, hey, does anybody have anything to say? And he was like, I do. And then he punched uh, the groom into the sun. You guys look, it's just like how good guys. Yeah. <laughs> Laser eyes, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it's fun good guy stuff. <laughs> now, CNN claimed that he met with Russians, which is true. But he met with anti-Kremlin activist group called the Pussy Riots. Now, <laughs> maybe CNN just isn't mature enough to say pussy without giggling for 48 minutes. Right? I mean, we all know that Ben Shapiro can't say the word at all. <laughs> Which, no. <laughs> that, was, that shit was too much for me. <laughs> It's incredible. And I think uh, we can all agree that CNN is the Ben Shapiro of corporate news. <laughs> but this is like a typical McCarthyist move, right? The, to compare the people of Russia to its leaders. And if all Russians are Kremlin puppets, then wouldn't that make all Americans 
Trump supporters? Right? Maybe CNN should start waving that MAGA flag around. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let that global xenophobic hate over invisible lines commence, you guys. Here we go. It's like an Olympic sport. <laughs> now, CNN also claims that uh, Assange met with Russia Today, or RT, you know, the journalists for, uh, that work for that news network. RT is uh, Russian state television, so it's clearly connected and controlled by Russian intelligence, right? Just the, the same way that the BBC is connected to MI5 or NPR is funded by the American military. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Whoops. This is NPR, National Public Radio. Support for WAMU was provided by Lockheed Martin. Bringing criminals to justice is more important than ever. Advanced systems developed by Lockheed Martin help federal agents get the job done faster. Lockheed Martin, we never forget who we're working for. Whoa! <laughs> is that legitimate? That is what a real is ad that? that ran on WAMU in the early 2000s. Holy shit. <laughs> what yep. the fuck? <laughs> the local Pittsburgh one runs ads where they're supported by Boeing and Westinghouse. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was, that, yeah. It's fun. It's fun, you guys. <laughs> Look, MSNBC, Fox News, NPR, and CNN bolster CIA talking points, as CNN did with this smear piece. So, so in reality, how can we trust something like CNN, right? Besides, we now know that the former director of the CIA and current secretary of state and America's deadliest care bear, Mike Pompeo, was in... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He was encouraged to lie in the CIA. When I was a cadet, what's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Mm. I, I, I was a CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's like, we, we, had, we, had, entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. Yes, the glory of the American experiment, where they sit there and say, how many times can we get these dopes to believe our McCarthy is bullshit? Oh, man. How many times can we lie to the American public, right? Why would you believe anybody that's a part of, of this narrative, of this narrative of willful lies, right? Besides, the RT journalists went to interview Assange to get an accurate view of the story, something that no corporate American journalist did. Not one of them. Now, CNN also claimed that Putin rushed to Assange's aid, like the ending of some fucking rom-com, you know? For the scene where the hero has to run through an airport to get to his lover. <laughs> Imagine that, but with like Putin and Assange, that's what CNN claims happened. Uh, now, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, the Committee to Protect Journalists, ACLU, Reporters Without Borders, Freedom of Press Foundation, Center of Constitutional Rights, and a bunch of other organizations are all defending Assange. So, with that lot, with that transitive property, does that mean that all of those organizations are also Kremlin toadies now, CNN? This is what binary thinking does. It strips us all away from our logic. We can't see the nuance of any situation. Now, all of the information that CNN presented in their article comes from the security co a security company from Spain that was hired by the Ecuadorian embassy to protect it in case anyone came to harm the, the diplomats that were in there or Assange personally. The company, called Undercover Global, set up cameras and audio recording equipment to maintain protection, but then they were just spying on Assange. As uh, Fidel Narvaez, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, uh, but he's a former Ecuadorian embassy diplomat who was in the embassy uh, when Julian Assange was, that, was there, said that the, an embassy isn't a prison. So the UC global surveillance system was treating him like he was already a criminal in prison. UC Global sold their surveillance tapes to the CIA and amplified their spying on behalf of the CIA. In fact, David Morales, UC Global's CEO, would call them the American friends 
in a bunch of their meetings. And this went so far as to putting cameras in the women's bathrooms to spy on Assange's meetings. One of the details in this report in El Pais is that the CIA uh, relied on surveillance foot, uh, equipment that was put inside of the women's bathroom and that it was inside of the women's bathroom where sometimes meetings were held in a bid to avoid uh, this very fear of surveillance. Is that true that, that meetings were held in there? Well, during those uh, seven years, the surveillance equipment inside the embassy basically uh, grow and uh, multiply. Cameras were installed all over, and one of the few places where they were not cameras, uh, I think, was one of the one of the bathrooms. That's that's right, and and Julian knew that he was being. A spy, so he chose to 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 have uh, meetings with his uh, lawyers, prob probably the most sensitive meetings. Not exactly in the bathroom, but just outside the bathroom in a little corridor where he thought that no camera, no microphones will will reach. But I think he was wrong by by what <laughs> was uh, discovered now by by El, um, El Pais with this last report. They were obviously trying to to get every single corner of that embassy surveilled, yeah. Which also means that they picked up the, any activity that was going on inside of the actual women's bathroom, which is just a, um, it's a, it was a, it was a startling revelation to read. Not just this, but when they found out about Assange's fiance and kids, David Morales tried to basically send an employee of UC Global to steal dirty diapers from the trash to get a DNA sample from the feces, which FYI, not how poop works. So. I just want to take a moment, uh, and I think all of us together should take this moment, to congratulate Mr. David Morales, because he is now officially grosser than Jeff Bezos. What an accomplishment. <laughs> Big round of applause for someone to get to. I bet his parents are so proud of how gross he is. Like spying on Assange, especially in the women's bathroom, is a clear violation of attorney client privileges and also i will say lady bathroom privileges okay that's two things i think we need to be very respectful of and all of this done was done to validate and bolster the espionage act to ensure that those in power are able to commit their corporate war crimes without accountability or punishment i want to make this point very clear I don't think there should be any reason that his trial should continue. And there should be no reason why Julian Assange should continue to be in prison. Remember, Daniel Ellsberg's case was done when they found out that Nixon was trying to steal documents from Ellsberg's daughter, or doctor, right? Julian Assange was spied on and tortured by the American government and is still undergoing a fucking trial. The UK judge was completely aware of UC Global's actions within the embassy and is still saying that there needs to be a trial. This is a desperate attempt to ensure that the Espionage Act can crush dissent as Woodrow Wilson wanted. This case basically right now is about whether Julian Assange caused harm instead of inform the public about government misdeeds. Right. And both of those things are correct. Right. To those in power, what Assange and any whistleblower reveals is to inform the public about the wrongdoings of those in power. The only people that are harmed by this are those in power. These, these people don't have a defense for their criminal activities, so, so they use propaganda and authoritarian tactics to smear Assange's character. 
I mean, look at the way Mike Pompeo talks about this man. It's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. They have pretended America's First Amendment freedoms shield them from justice. They may have believed that, but they're wrong. Yeah. That's one of the most famous statements that uh, Mike Pompeo made, non-state hostile intelligence agency. First of all, Assange doesn't have a state because he's not from the United States. <laughs> he is Australian. So, all right, they're not all going to be great, guys. <laughs> but, but look, that's a hard slam. That's a hard slam from Pompeo, right? He took away Assange's state. I mean, is he solid? Is he gaseous? Is he liquid? We don't know. We don't know anymore. <laughs> Pompeo took all of those qualities away from him because he and the CIA got caught spying on the citizens of America and Assange himself. But there is a silver lining because Assange doesn't need a state because he's transcended that, right? The truth has no state. It just is. We'll be putting that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Now, Assange's trial sets the president the precedent that the United States will be able to arrest people for publishing information that isn't flattering to them. Right? Basically, when the U.S. government asks, does this law or war make me look like an authoritarian dictator with an assassination complex? And we answer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, because it's like the truth. <laughs> This truth He's, hurts. The truth hurts. And that's why they get to imprison and torture us when we give them the truth. This opens the door to any global government to extradite people from the U.S. and try them under their version of the Espionage Act. Right? This affects the people's right to know. It's about transparency. You have things like corporate ad gag laws, which are laws that prevent journalists from talking about the horrors of things like factory farms in tandem with authoritarian governments and legislation like the Espionage Act. And that would mean that we, don't, we wouldn't get to know where our food comes from, how we're endangering the planet, why we are at war, and how the intelligence industrial complex is going to create another false coup for no goddamn reason. This is about our freedoms. Right. Our freedom to criticize and push back against a government that distrusts us and uses fear as a prime motive to strip us of our rights. This is about ensuring that when these people in power are caught with their pants down committing heinous crimes, they are punished for it. We don't have any freedoms if whistleblowers like Assange and Snowden and Daniel Everett Hale are kept in prison under the Espionage Act. The end. Thank you very much uh, for, for hanging out and tuning in. Uh, you guys are awesome. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a share and make sure people get to actually see this. Share this with your friends. Share this with your enemies. Share this with whoever you think is going to be uh, excited about uh, a content like this. If you're watching this on the, the Facebooks or the YouTubes, if that is your way that you enjoy watching uh, this show, then please make sure that you are subscribed. Please make sure that you hit the bell to get notifications about new videos that I'll be dropping. Uh, I drop videos every single week on this channel. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version, please subscribe there and write us a review. And if you're on Rockfin, thank you for watching this show on Rockfin. Rockfin is a uh, crypto blockchain uh, content producer friendly uh, platform. It's like the Netflix for uh, co uh, content producers, especially if you like political commentary content like Graham Elwood and Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Convo Couch, uh, Richard Mendhurst, a ton of other people are on Rockfin. And if you, uh, if you subscribe, it's $10 a month, you get access to all of the premium content that is not just available on my channel, but on every single person on Rockfin's channel. So you can go uh, check my Rockfin channel out at rockfin.com slash Krishmohan. Ha ha. Uh, for 
show dates to make donations. Check out past videos, past podcasts uh, to, to, to see what press interviews I've done. Uh, you can go directly to my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, thank you to all the people that have already become patrons ready to become subscribers continue to come out to these uh live virtual comedy shows uh it means a lot and i really appreciate you guys uh but till next week thank you for tuning in and we'll see